Hi, I am author Claudia Mills, and I want to share with you a little bit of my brand new book, The Lost Language, which is coming out this month from Holiday House. This is a verse novel. That means the whole entire book is written as poetry. I think that this is a wonderful way for me to tell this story because it lets me really get inside the head of my main character and show her thoughts and feelings in a particularly intimate way. So I'm going to read to you several of the poems from the beginning of the book, skipping around a little, but I think you're going to get the gist of the story. So here we go. Things I've lost, a partial list. Who bear? I took him on vacation and he got left behind in the hotel bed, but my dad called and two days later, a lumpy package arrived in the mail and the lump was poo. My jacket on the bus for the class trip to the planetarium. Well, I almost lost it, but Lizard noticed in the nick of time and raced back to our seat and grabbed it for me. My special lucky button when I had a hole in my pants pocket, Lizard found that for me too. My glasses and Buddha delight when my mother had already said she couldn't handle one more thing. And I knew that losing my glasses would have counted as one more thing. But I told my dad and he took care of it. And my mother never had to know so for that. Pencils, more pencils. You may have noticed that I got everything back again, except the pencils, but everyone loses pencils. And anyway, the world is full of pencils. You may also have noticed that it's always other people who get the lost things back for me. So what would, you ha what would happen if you lost those people? Who would help you get them back again? Two girls named Elizabeth. Lizard's name isn't really Lizard. You probably already knew that. But here's the strange thing. My best friend and I both had the same name, Elizabeth. Only she was Liz and I was Betsy. Here's another strange thing. How can Betsy be a nickname for Elizabeth? But when we started being best friends in third grade, she said Betsy was a dumb name and I should be Liz too. So for one week, we were both Liz, which made us the best best friends ever, except that it was confusing. So she said she'd change her name to Lizard and I'd be the only Liz. But I said in a very small voice that I'd rather be the only Betsy. And she gave a big sigh and said she'd call me B for Betsy. And then it became Bumblebee. And then it was just Bumble. Now we're in sixth grade and she's lizard to everyone in the world, even to her parents and her sisters, even to teachers who sometimes forget that lizard isn't the name teachers should be calling anyone. And I'm bubble to her, but not to anyone else. So when we're together, just the two of us, we become two girls named Lizard and Bumble. What my mom thinks of the name Bumble, she hates it. The first time she heard lizard say, bye Bumble, my mother said, Bumble? And Lizard said, that's her nickname. My mom said her nickname is Betsy. And Lizard said, Bumble is my nickname for her. My mom said, Bumble, as in blunder, Bumble, as in stumble, Bumble, as in fumble, Bumble, as in move in an awkward way, Bumble, as speak in a confused way. My mom knows more about words than anyone I know. Bumble, like Bumblebee, Lizard said, Bumblebee's buzzing around beautiful flowers. I could tell my mom wanted to tell Lizard not to call me that, but she didn't want to be mean to my new best friend. But every time my mom hears Lizard call me Bumble, which has been a lot of times over the last three years, I can see her jaw tighten with all the things she isn't saying. Movers and shakers. My mother says Lizard is a mover and shaker. She didn't say, but I know she means I'm the one who is moved and shaken like this one time. Lizard was at my house sorting little pieces of broken tile that my father brought from his workshop to glue onto cheap plastic plates to turn them into mosaic platters for a banquet she and I were going to have. Not a banquet for lots of people with roasted pheasant and cups of mead, like in the book about the Middle Ages we had just read together. Just a banquet for the two of us with oatmeal raisin cookies and grape juice. I was picking out some blue and silver pieces for mine, but Lizard said we should both make ours with red and gold, so I started to put the blue and silver pieces away. My mother was helping to cover the kitchen table with newspaper so we wouldn't get glue on it, and she said to Lizard, why don't you make yours the way you want, and Betsy can make hers the way she wants. Sure, Lizard said. Then she added under her breath, if Bumble doesn't care that no kings and queens 
would ever have silver platters if they had gold and red goes with gold better than blue does. So I made mine red and gold too. And I couldn't tell if my mother was more mad at Lizard for telling me what to do or more disappointed in me for doing it. My mother. My mother can speak five languages fluently. English, duh, French, Italian, German, and Russian. That's her job, to know stuff about languages. She's a professor of linguistics at the university. And even though she already speaks more languages than anyone I know, she studies other languages that hardly anyone speaks anymore. She travels to the places where very old people live who still speak those languages. The last people to speak a language are always old because as the world becomes more and more connected, young people are the first to learn new ways of living and new ways of speaking. So my mother tries to learn as much of each dying language as she can, the words in it and the rules for how to put the words together. She records the old people talking and writes a book about each language so that when the language is finally lost and forgotten, there will be at least someone in the world who made it possible to remember. Givers and takers. Lizard says that givers always marry takers. Takers can't marry takers because they both want to do the taking. Givers could marry givers, except the takers are so good at taking, they get there first. Lizard's mother is a giver, according to Lizard, and her father is a taker. My father is a giver, according to Lizard, and my mother is a taker. It's true that my father is a giver, but it's not exactly true my mother is a taker, or at least I don't think she means to be. It's more that she has to give all the time to everyone else. Her students who take the exam she has to grade and then come to complain to her if they get a B. And the other professors in her department who pressure her to be on all the time consuming committees she doesn't want to be on. But mostly she tries to give to the people whose languages are dying so fast that even if she worked every minute of every day, which she practically does already, she couldn't learn about them in time. So she doesn't have a lot of giving left over for my father and me. Lizard's superpower. Lizard always knows everything first. Maybe it's because she has two older sisters or her father really is a spy and tells her things he learns from spying. She was the first to know Aiden A had lice and Eloise's parents were getting divorced. She knew about the divorce even before Eloise did. She knew Tad would be elected class president even though everyone said they had voted for Singh and Rock. Even thinks about the world, she knows them first. She's the one who told me way back in third grade that the polar ice caps are melting and whole countries will be covered with water someday. She told me most eggs come from chickens who live squished together in tiny cages that make the chickens so frantic that the farmers have to cut off their beaks so they won't peck each other to death. Lizard's favorite things to know first are bad things. Sometimes I think she likes knowing bad things first just so she can be the one to roll her eyes at everyone else, especially me, and say, I thought everybody knew that. I think a little part of her also likes how sad I feel when the things I thought were true turn out not to be. The one time I know something first. Today, Monday, when we're at Lizard's house after school, Lizard tells me that a third of all animal species might go extinct because of global climate change. I say, did you know that thousands of languages are going extinct too? I expect her to say, everybody knows that. But instead she says, languages can't go extinct. I say, yes, they can. And I tell her about my mom and the dying languages she writes books about. I thought your mom was an anthropologist, she said, making it sound like she knows more about my mom than I do. She's not, she's a linguist, I reply. And Lizard says in this accusing kind of way, I'm sure you said she was an anthropologist, as if I wouldn't know my own mother's job. But I know she is just mad that I broke the rule that I'm supposed to be the one who knows things second. I didn't even realize it was a rule until then when I broke it. And here's the last one I'm gonna read. Why I love Lizard anyway. You might wonder why I would be best friends with someone who always acts like we're playing school and every single time she gets to be the teacher. But then Lizard says, and this is why I love Lizard anyway, what if rather than writing about dying languages like your mom, you and I saved one instead? So that is the lost language and the rest of the book. 
Lizard and Bumble are going to work together to learn about a language that's going extinct to see if they can speak as much of it as they can and try to save it. And you may have noticed that Lizard is pretty controlling and Betsy's mother's pretty controlling. So maybe in the course of the story, Betsy can find a way to come into her own. So thank you for letting me share this with you today.